Hey, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Nomadic Geek. In today's episode of the Geeky Surveillance System tutorial series, we're going to dive into the exciting world of bidirectional communication using WebSockets. Imagine being able to control a relay with just one click from your dashboard. That's exactly what we'll be learning today with our powerful ESP32 CAM module. So, grab your ESP32 CAM and let's get started. In the first video of this series, we used the AZ Envy development board equipped with a gas sensor and humidity and temperature sensors to stream its readings and transmit them via WebSockets. In the second video, we set up a Node.js server to stream the sensor values to. In the third video, we constructed the web client page which displayed the values streamed from the sensors to the Node.js server. In the fourth video, we used the ESP32 CAM module to stream video to the Node.js server. In the fifth, we added object detection for our video stream with the help of TensorFlow.js. In the previous episode, we used the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor in conjunction with the ESP32 CAM module. By combining them, we were able to seamlessly include sensor data readings to our Node.js WebSocket server alongside the video stream. If you missed it, be sure to check out the episode. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you know when I post more content. If you have any thoughts, questions, or feedback, please don't hesitate to share them in the comments section below. Stay tuned, and let's get started. Let's open the Arduino IDE and revisit the project from the earlier videos in this series for the ESP32 CAM module. The ESP32 CAM module is equipped with a bright built-in LED flashlight on pin 4. As our first step, we are going to turn it on and off using the controls on our dashboard. So we define pin 4 to it. Then, we'll set the initial state using an integer value. An integer is a whole number, without any fractional component. But we are only going to use 0 and 1 for on and off. The Node.js server will be listening for messages from the dashboard and, when necessary, sending the appropriate command to the relevant ESP32 CAM module. To facilitate this, we will set up a function to handle messages from the Node.js server. The function parses a message received from the Node.js server and checks if it contains the string on underscore board underscore LED underscore one. If it does, it turns the LED connected to flash underscore pin on or off based on the value of the message. In the setup function, we add the following row which associates the onMessage callback function with the client's onMessage event. This way, every time a new message is received, the onMessage callback function will be executed, allowing the ESP32 to act on the message accordingly. This line sets the flash pin as an output pin on the board. This allows the module to send signals out of the specified pin. In the loop function, we add a client.pull call to pull for new messages from the node.js server, which triggers the onMessage callback function that we just added. That's it for the ESP32 CAM module. Upload the code to the ESP32 CAM module with your FTDI serial to USB converter. Ensure that your configuration and port are correctly established prior to uploading your sketch. We will now proceed to the node.js code and set it up to send messages to the ESP32 CAM when the flashlight button in the dashboard is pressed for each card with a video stream. First, we intend to place the sensor settings in a separate JSON file as the data related to the sensors is likely to rapidly expand as we progress in developing the code. Right-click on the File Explorer bar and select the option to create a new file. 
Name the file sensors.json. From our server.js, we retrieve the connections object and paste it in our sensors.js file. As can be observed, this is not a valid JSON structure. It is, in fact, a JavaScript object. There are numerous methods to convert it, but for this purpose, we shall install a plugin within Visual Studio Code. Click on the extensions option in the right hand sidebar. In the search, type pretty space JS and hit enter. Click install on the plugin. As you can see in the demo, if we use Ctrl plus Shift plus P on a Windows or Linux machine, we can type a command to convert it to JSON format. On a Mac, the keyboard shortcut is Command plus Shift plus P. Let's try it out. That did the trick. Save it and return to our code. We can remove the connections variable and instead include the JSON as sensors. But then we have to change the code to take the new sensors variable instead of connections. We will no longer need the settings object as we will use the sensors object for that as well. We instead store a reference to the particular sensor in a connection variable when we work with it. We make alterations and modify the properties that were set on the settings object to be set on the connection reference object instead. Now we have to change so that we send the sensors object to the clients instead of the connections object. Save it and head over to the sensors.json file again. We add a command to the object representing the ESP32 CAM module on port 8085. Save it and open the client.js file. Let's add a console log so that we can verify in the inspector console that we are correctly receiving the command we set on the sensor object. Save it and start the node.js server. We need to reset the ESP32 CAM module using the reset button as it only listens for connections during the initial power up. This is something we will fix later on, don't worry. Right click the HTML and click inspect. Click console. Here, we can see the object we want to take advantage of, however, we are also getting undefined from the other two sensors as they do not have any commands. So let's head back to the code to fix that. This code iterates over the commands property of each device in the MD devices object. We perform a check to see if any objects are undefined, which we saw in the web tools console. For each iteration, the code checks if a HTML element with a particular ID exists in the document. If it doesn't, the code creates a new element with that ID. This element serves as a container for another element that displays the state of the command which is an element that has a data state attribute based on the command object. The code adds a click event listener to the container element. When the element is clicked, the code sends a WebSocket message to the server with information about the recipient device and the desired state change for the command. And in the else statement, if the element already exists, the code checks if the state of the command has changed. If it has, the code updates the data state attribute of the child element to reflect the new state. Overall, the code dynamically updates the HTML document with elements that display the state of each command for each device and allows the user to change the state of the commands by clicking on the elements.
Lastly, we need to add a wrapper for the commands elements on the sensor card. We try again and can see that we have to fix a bug. Back in the code, we navigate to the JSON file. Currently, we need to fix it by adding an empty command object to the rest of the sensors. Save. Restart the server. And try again. Resetting the ESP32 cam with its button. And now, the errors are gone. Let's add some styling to our action button so that we can see it and interact with it. In the client.css file, we add styling for both the button and the icon, which will either be lit up or turned off depending on the data state attribute. We should also add the SVG file of our icon to the icons folder. Let's try refreshing the browser. The button should then be visible. There it is. When clicking it, it doesn't turn on. We have to make the node.js server respond to the command and send it to the ESP32 cam module. Back in the server.js file, we add the code to listen for the command. We take the JSON string sent from the client and parses it into an object. We check if the operation property is function, which we can see in the client.js file that we set. We set a command property to the particular device we are sending the command to. The command comprises a key value pair. The key is command ID, which is the function name, and the value, which can either be 1 4 on or 0 4 off. We will then send the command to the device as a response when the ESP32 cam sends its data in the next tick. So if the sensor has a pending command set to it, it will send it and then set the command property to null as it is now consumed. Save the file and restart the node.js server, and we will then check the serial monitor to see if the commands are reaching the ESP32 cam module. After restarting the server, reset the ESP32 cam module again. Now, when clicking the flashlight button, we can see the message flash by in the serial monitor. But, we cannot yet turn it back on again, as the state has not been changed in the dashboard. We want the ESP32 cam to inform the server of its current state, so that the server can then notify the dashboard of its new state. Earlier, we created a variable to keep track of the state of the flashlight. It is set to 1 when turned on, and 0 when turned off. This state must be sent to the server, so we include it in the WebSocket message. We separate the sensor data using a semicolon and the state keyword, so the node.js server can distinguish between the two types of data. This is how the server will get the data. Sensor readings on the left and states to the right. Now, we will improve the ESP32 CAM module to prevent the need for manual resetting each time the connection to the node.js server is lost. If a connection is lost, the module will automatically restart, allowing it to resume execution from the setup function where it establishes a connection to the server. This WebSocket event dispatcher acts as an intermediary between the WebSocket and our code, allowing you to handle events related to the WebSocket connection in a clean and organized manner. So, on connection closed, the module will restart itself. We can now upload the code and return to our server code.
Now we can observe the string sent from the ESP32 CAM module in our dashboard. However, this is not a desired way to handle the data. The server has to do something about that. We can also note that the flashlight value starts at 0, but changes to 1 when the flashlight button is clicked. Let's take care of the data. So this is how we handle the data. We store incoming data in a variable named sensor data. We check if the data contains a semicolon. If it does, we split the data into two parts. We store the first part in sensor data. The second part is split into an array of states. For each state, we split it into a key value pair. We search for a matching command using the find method in the commands array. If a match is found, we update its state with the value. We are going to utilize the sensor data variable instead of data for the sensor data into the dashboard card as it comprises only the initial part of the message from the ESP32 CAM. Let's save, restart the server and watch the result. There you have it. This concludes this episode of the tutorial series. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to hit the subscribe button and give this video a big like. That way, you'll never miss a single one of my future uploads. And if you have any ideas for topics you'd like to see me cover in the future, drop a comment below. Your feedback and suggestions are always appreciated. So until next time, farewell and keep on learning.